Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cybersecurity Shorts. My name is Kelly Wright, CISSP, and I'm part of the VA IT Virtual Campus team. With me today is Luda Poloff, also a CISSP. In this session, we're going to take a closer look at social engineering attacks. They prey on unknowing victims to obtain personal and organizational information, which may result in information and or identity theft. There is a course reference handout, so be sure to download it. Social engineering is the art of manipulating people so they'll give up confidential information. It's a non-technical attack that relies on human interaction and tricking people to break normal security procedures in order to gather information, commit fraud, or gain computer system access. These types of attacks are so successful because victims naturally want to trust other people and they want to be helpful. They're tricked into releasing information that will be used to attack a computer network. Social engineers rely on the fact that people are unaware of the value of information they possess and are careful about protecting it. Security is all about knowing who and what to trust. First, it's knowing when to and when not to take a person at their word. Second, when to trust that person is the person you're communicating is indeed the person you think they are. Third, when to suspect that a website or a person on the phone is not legitimate. And fourth, when providing your information is or is not a good idea. In this short, Lou and I will go over different types of social engineering attacks. The first type of social engineering attack we're going to talk about is shoulder surfing. Shoulder surfing involves nothing more than watching someone when they enter sensitive information. Their shoulder surfer can observe you entering a password, typing a credit card number, or entering any other pertinent information. Dumpster diving is a common social engineering attack used to retrieve information that could be used to carry out an attack on a computer network. Organizations normally generate a huge amount of paper, most of which ends up in dumpsters or in recycling bins. These dumpsters may contain information that is highly sensitive in nature. Dumpster diving isn't limited to searching through the trash for obvious treasures like, you know, access codes or passwords written down on sticky notes. Seemingly innocent information like a phone list, calendar, or organizational chart can be used to assist an attacker using social engineering techniques to gain access to the network. The next type of social engineering attack to discuss is eavesdropping. Eavesdropping is the act of secretly listening in on or overhearing parts of a conversation. This type of attack is generally passive. For example, a coworker might overhear your dinner plans because you're speaking loudly or you're using your speakerphone. The opportunity to overhear a conversation is coupled with the carelessness of the parties in the conversation. Snooping is another type of social engineering attack. It occurs when someone secretly goes through your files hoping to find something interesting. The files might be in electronic format or they could be hard copy. Someone who's interested in your hard copy files might check your dumpster, recycling bins, or even be bold enough to go through your cabinets. Don't understand, underestimate someone on a mission. They'll also look under your keyboard for post-it notes or for scrap notes tacked to your bulletin board. Computer snooping, on the other hand, involves someone searching through your electronic files. This can happen on-site using your physical computer or through a remote attack on your system. Our next type of attacking is phishing. Phishing occurs when someone attempts to acquire sensitive information like usernames, passwords, and credit card details while pretending to be a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication. Communications claiming to be from popular social websites, auction sites, banks, online payment processors, or IT administrators are commonly used to lure an unsuspecting victim. 
Phishing is typically carried out by email spoofing or instant messaging and often directs users to enter details at a fake website whose look and feel are almost identical to the, the legitimate one. The danger with phishing emails is that they might contain links to websites that are infected with malware. Make sure to mouse over links to view the URL. A fake URL almost always points to an adaptation of the actual URL and it's not the real thing. Spear phishing is basically the same as phishing, except spear phishing emails appear to be from someone you know, but they really aren't. The person targeting you uses information that you would be less likely to question because it appears to be coming from a trusted source, because it appears far more likely to be a legitimate message. It cuts through your standard defenses like a spear, and has a higher likelihood of being clicked. General, generating this type of attack requires much more work on the part of the criminal and often involves using information from your contact list, friends list, from social media sites, and so on. Whaling is nothing more than phishing or spear phishing, however, is a digital con game that targets upper level managers. The objective? is to swindle managers into providing confidential organizational information. Whaling, like any other phishing attack, involves a web page or email that pretends to be legitimate and urgent. When you combine phishing with voice over IP, it becomes vishing. Vishing is just an elevated form of social engineering. While crank calls have been in existence since the invention of the telephone, the rise of voice over internet protocol, or voice over IP, now makes it possible for someone to call you from almost anywhere in the world without the worry of being traced or identified on caller ID. The criminal pretends to be someone they are not in order to get data from you. Next on the list is caller ID spoofing. Many of us have come to rely on the caller ID kind of serves as a simple form of authentication. However, there are several programs out there that criminals can use to send fake values for both the phone number and the name to display to a caller ID box. This type of attack is known as caller ID spoofing, and when coupled with other forms of social engineering, it can convince a victim that they are talking to someone trusted when really they aren't. Tailgating is a social engineering term used for someone who shadows you when you enter a building. Following closely, they're able to come in right behind you without authorization and without needing to use a key, an access card, or any other security device. Many social engineering intruders who need physical access to a site will use this method to gain entry. Piggybacking is a type of tailgating, but in this situation, the person being followed has given the follower permission to enter it without using the appropriate entry device. Now, let's talk about impersonation. Impersonation is a human-based type of social engineering attack. This type of attack happens when the hacker plays the role of someone you're likely to trust or obey in order to get access to your office information or information systems. This type of social engineering plays on our natural tendencies to believe people are who they say they are and to follow instructions when asked by an authority figure. The last social engineering attack on our list is the hoax. Network users have plenty of real viruses to worry about, yet some people find it entertaining to issue phony threats to keep people on their toes. A virus hoax is a false warning about a computer virus. Usually the warning comes in an email message or is distributed through an organization's internal network. These messages are typically forwarded using distribution lists and will suggest that you forward it to others. I know, I hate hoaxes. They really aren't funny. I agree with that. I, they're not funny. In any case, that's our session on social engineering attacks. Join us again soon for another cybersecurity short.